This idea, Netflix for gaming, has been talked about for years, but has never been accomplished. Why do you think it can be done now? I think right now we're really focused on player choice. There are more ways than ever for people to play video games, whether they're buying them at retail, buying them digitally, or we believe uh, having access to a great library of games that they get through our subscription service, Game Pass. It really is about player choice. We see people uh, finding games that they might not have known about, uh, trying to play games that they might not have otherwise uh, engaged in, and it's just been, uh, for us, about community, about a bigger audience, and about player choice, a new way to find games. Sony launched their game streaming service four years ago to limited success. What makes you think you can do better, A, and that B, you can really play catch up? Well, for us, everything is, starts with the player, and we think that we've got a service that really uh, dials in exactly what our fans and what our players are after, which is choice, access to a big library of games, including some of our biggest franchises. Um, we've also been real fortunate. We announced at E3 on Sunday in our briefing that some of our big partners like Ubisoft are bringing the division into Game Pass. So it's a a wonderful lineup of games and it's really based on access for the players. So when it comes to software, how do you continue to compete with Sony? I mean, that really is the question, right? It's a wonderful time in the games industry. Um, I think we're headed into one of the most amazing falls in terms of lineups across all platforms. The technology is mature. We see teams that have really been able to deal with it. Um, and I'm just excited about all the innovation going on in our studios. You saw some amazing graphics from our Forza team and our new game Forza Horizon. And the Halo team uh, showed off some of the work they've been doing. How is Fortnite changing the way you're thinking about your business? You know, Fortnite is, uh, first, it's great that it's become so popular. I think it's brought a whole new uh, class of players into the game. We see young people playing the game. Uh, it's great that Fortnite is a game that uh, young women are engaging in, which is great. I think it's got a great broad audience. Uh, again, it comes back to us about player choice. That's a kind of game. It's got a, a certain way of play and a certain way of engaging, uh, and it just represents one of the many ways that we like to connect with our fans. Do you think it, it, it's going to be a long-term hit, or do you think... It could be just a moment. You know, I wish that I had that crystal ball <laughs> to know. Uh, the industry is full of things that have come and gone and things that have lasted for decades, so we'll see. How much do you think it'll change your business going forward? I mean, how is it changing how you think about how you make money? Now, for us, and I'm, uh, games really take quite a while to make, right? Yeah. Every game has got a pretty long cycle. So while we look at things like Fortnite to inform what our fans like and what our players are engaging in, the games that we're making today really have to start with an idea and a way to connect with the player and that's what we're really focused on. There are people out there saying this is the last generation of consoles. Would you agree? You know, we think that there are, that people love playing games in their living room, and there are a whole bunch of people that want a really high-powered box in their living room so they can play on their TV. We know that mobile's growing, we know that PC is growing, but we're committed to console because we think it's a great way to So game. there will be a new Xbox. We're committed to, <laughs> to consoles. We think it's a great way to play. Um, you, you made a number of acquisitions of studios. Talk to me about the strategy. We went out to find creators, people with great ideas that had teams that know how to execute on those ideas. When you think about uh, the team at Ninja Theory, they just made a great game with Hellblade. You think about what Guillaume and the team are doing at Compulsion, it really starts with a creative core and what we can do to bring them into our family and support them to do more of that. Windows 10 is playing a bigger role in Xbox, but Microsoft still doesn't make any money from it. There's been talk of a potential buyout, rumors um, of, a, of a partnership of some sort. You know, what might we see there? Well, uh, we're very fortunate to be a part of Microsoft and have access to all the folks that are working on Windows 10 and console. When we think about uh, advancements in graphics, advancements in technology, being part of Microsoft is a real advantage for Xbox. So, I know you, you said you don't have a crystal ball, but you do have to plan for the future. You do have to map Absolutely. out your strategy, especially since the life cycle of the development of a game is so long. So when you look at gaming five years from now, what's the same and what's different? Well, I think we'll absolutely see advancements in graphics like we always have in consoles. But, you know, we're focused on things right now. One of the things we talked about is our fast start technology. I think that uh, the use of artificial intelligence, machine learning is going to play an increased role. And again, we feel lucky as Xbox to sit so close to the folks at Microsoft that are working on technology like that. Is the future cloud-based? I think cloud will certainly be a pervasive technology. Uh, some of the stuff that we're showing here at E3, uh, Forza Horizon 4 takes place in a shared open world. All of that is powered on the back end by the cloud. Um, and it will be a pervasive tech in most games, I think. 
but in five years, you think people will still be buying physical games? You know, um, for us, I, we are about player choice. We still see so many people wanting to buy games at retail. We support that. We won't see people buying digital. And like we talked about, we see people engaging with Game Pass. Um, we're going to follow where people want to uh, buy those games. We, we're really more about what's the most choice for the player. Now, I know addiction has been a topic for the gaming industry for a long time. Recently, we saw Apple making moves to curb tech addiction under sure. some pressure, but yeah. you know, new monitoring tools, new uh, ways to measure your screen time. Is that something the video game industry should be taking more seriously? Well, at Xbox, and I'm proud to work for Xbox in that we have very sophisticated tools for parents to set limits on what kinds of games uh, can be played on a console. We have uh, tools to set limits on screen time. You know, our core belief about games is that games bring us together. There's something we can all engage in and we think it's a great activity for families. We encourage parents to be involved in the games that their children are playing and again we uh, just feel really proud about the tools that we provide so that people can make choices about how they want to spend their screen time. Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, has tied pay to diversity outcomes mm -hmm. and yeah. what are you doing at Xbox to hire more women, yeah. hire more minorities, promote them, and make sure that they're represented in games as well. Yeah. So if we start with the idea that games are global and games are for everyone, our development teams need to reflect the diversity that's out in the world. Um, we, and with the team that I get to work with, is uh, we have a great diverse lineup of studio heads. Bonnie Ross, who runs Halo for us. Shannon Loftus runs our publishing team. Helen Chang looks after Minecraft for us. And uh, Sarah Bond is a woman who runs our business development team. We're pretty committed to making sure that our teams reflect the diversity that we want to see in games. Are you seeing a shift in the demographics of players? We absolutely are. There are almost two billion players, uh, people playing games on the planet today. As that number grows, it is absolutely going to start to reflect the balance of people that live on the planet out of that two billion.